Hi you guys, it's Alex again, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a helpful analogy to kind of get your head around the different types of Pilates equipment, why they exist, and why it's important that teachers understand the differences and similarities and origins of them all. So, cool, to start off, um, first reason, like why am I even talking about this? And what does this have to do with anything? So I recently realized um, that a lot of us go through our teacher training programs not really getting a full history of Pilates and the politics of it and the different schools and philosophies and equipment um, that exists over the years. Um, and I find this really, really important because what I think can happen is that you go through your training and you work in that one studio, maybe you observe in that one studio, and then let's say you move cities and suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, everything here is totally different. Like the equipment is not what I know it to be. Um, I don't understand how it works or ask me questions I don't understand. Um, and I look like kind of an idiot, which isn't a very good feeling. Um, there's things that I could say about teacher training and how I wish that is, was included. Maybe I'll say that in the end, we'll see. Um, but so the first thing, if you're like, first of all, I'm still a little bit lost about what this video is about. Um, it really is that there are different models and brands of Pilates equipment that are generally associated with different styles of teaching Pilates. So for example, in the back here, I have an Allegro 2 that's made by Balanced Body. Um, it's generally associated with contemporary Pilates, whatever that means, um, as well as larger group classes. And that's something really important um, in terms of its usage and its design and its look and its feel. So I came up with an analogy that I find very helpful and that's kind of thinking about Pilates equipment like we think about cars. Um, also, if you're a car person, you can keep watching this video. I'm not a car person either. Um, the other day, for whatever reason, I was thinking about my driver's ed experience when I first learned how to drive. And one of the first things we talked about was that there's automatic cars and there's sticks, manuals, and that it was gonna be up to all of us to figure out which car we preferred to drive and why. And simultaneously, they would have different feels, it would be different on the road, um, the things we'd have to look out for were gonna be different. There's also a difference if you're driving a small car or a bigger car and how you actually navigate and where you need to look, where your blind spots are. And that was really, really clear. So I went into driver's ed knowing, okay, the car I'm learning how to drive in is not like every single car in the world. I need to be prepared for the fact that if I'm learning how to drive an automatic, I don't know how to drive a manual car. And that's okay. I know how to drive, but I don't know how to drive a manual car. Um, and so with this analogy, then it's like, okay, well, what if we say that a lot of Pilates equipment is kind of similar to four types of cars? Number one, being a vintage manual Porsche. Number two, being a sturdy, reliable Toyota Corolla, number three, a Lexus SUV, and number four, a Tesla. So what are those different cars like and why did I think that they were suitable and relatable to Pilates? So number one, let's actually start with a Tesla. So a Tesla, from an engineering perspective, functions very, very differently than a traditional car. It runs you know, on a battery, you've got all the solar options, like everything, it's maybe even, you can fall asleep while it, it, it's driving you, it's got all these bells and whistles, it doesn't have the big engine you're used to, it doesn't make all the noises. It's totally, totally different. It's revolutionary. It's questionable if we should even still call it a car in the way that we call, let's say, a vintage Porsche a car, okay? So that's one. That's your Tesla. Um, then we have, let's say, your Lexus SUV. That car is nice and big and plush. It's an automatic. There's lots of room in the back. It looks nice. It might not be the most efficient car in terms of gas mileage, but it gets everyone from A to B and it's very safe. Cool, that's one kind of car. Toyota Corolla. Let's say that's also an automatic. It's small, it's compact, it's super affordable. They stay on the road forever. You can get all the new parts, or yeah, you can get the new parts you need for it. Um, and it, it lasts, it does the trick. What more do you need? And then there's the vintage Porsche. That one, it's manual, 
It drives great when you're going fast around corners. It's really, really vital that the driver understands how to work the machine. The knowledge and the experience of the driver is gonna power that machine differently. You know, it looks amazing, it's classic, it's what cars were originally designed to be and marked a revolutionary new era in engineering and transportation. So yeah, that's like your vintage Porsche. So I think in everyday life, we understand that there's kind of different folks who are gonna be attracted to buying those individual cars. And it's like, whatever, that's just what you want. It suits your lifestyle. Well, let's say that all four of those cars were translated to Pilates equipment. So our Tesla is maybe like a Legree, or a Legree, depending on you pronounce it, mega former. Is that even Pilates equipment? I don't even know. It looks like it. A lot of people think it's the same, but functionally, very, 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 very different. You know, the vintage Porsche, you, you can't fall asleep at the wheel. There's no bells and buttons that are gonna go off or the car's not gonna drive itself, but in the Tesla, it will. Legree Megaformer, also functionally very different. So then where does that leave our Porsche? Well, our Porsche, as you might have guessed, is like a Gratz or a Contrology classical machine. So really taken from Joseph Pilates' original designs and ideas, and it has a super loyal following. It's known for having you know everything about the body mechanics, the body, the person on the machine really drives it, really drives the apparatus. You're giving it feedback, it's giving you feedback, you're all one thing. But vintage Porsches tend to have a kind of a higher price point associated, not super accessible. Maybe you've never seen one in real life. Like, I don't actually know if I've ever seen a real vintage Porsche either. So then what is our Toyota Corolla? Well, I don't know, for me that was the obvious one. That's where I first thought of. For me that was an Allegro, a balanced body Allegro. For a lot of us, depending on where we live, it might have been the first machine you ever saw, it might have been the machine you were trained on, the only one you ever knew existed. Might not be the most beautiful looking thing, but like I said with the Toyota Corolla, gets the job done, gets you from A to B, you can get it fixed real easily, you can buy one online. Cool, what more do you need? And then the last one is the SUV, the Lexus. Well, first of all, again, you might not realize that Lexus and Toyota are part of the same group. So for me, the Lexus SUV was just some of the newer models from Balanced Body, like the Allegro 2 that I happened to pick up secondhand. And that's really thinking more about comfort and the client experience. So for an SUV, you know, you want something that maybe you can throw a lot of kids in, you can drive to work, go to the grocery store, look good, all those things. And Allegro 2, also kind of of the contemporary Pilates vein, designed for larger group classes, designed to look a certain way, designed to be versatile, but still kind of relating back to some of those core things that we recognize maybe in a Porsche, which is that sleek design and some of the functionality. Again, with the Allegro 2 and with an SUV, you can also decide maybe if you wanna get it stick or if you wanna get it manual, depending on where you live. So those were kind of my four analogies. And again, that's no shade to any of those cars, those vehicles, any of those brands, and also any of those pieces of equipment. But the reason why I think this is kind of an important analogy is for us as teachers and instructors, we need to know that these things exist, that we don't kind of live in a bubble. So if you go through your teacher training program and you're taught that the only way to drive is to drive an SUV and that is it, you're probably gonna be a really bad driver if you get into that Porsche and you're probably gonna be like, well, this is not driving when you get into the self-driving Tesla. The Corolla, you're gonna be like, ah, cool, okay, I get this, whatever, gets the job done. Yeah, sound familiar? So let's say, um, I think the Porsche is really, really important in this kind of overall analogy. Because let's say that you're only used to driving a Tesla and a Corolla. Yeah, or excuse me, the SUV and the Corolla. And you get into that Porsche, but you actually don't know how to drive a manual yet. You know it exists, or maybe you didn't even know it existed. And you get in, you put your foot on the gas, and the car stalls. And you think, well, this is just a crappy car. You know, it looks like kind of weird. The shapes are all totally different than everything else I'm used to. And it doesn't run. 
How many times have we heard those conversations we had in Pilates, whether it's yourself or your client saying, I went to a class and I didn't feel anything. Well, I'm not gonna say that the teacher had nothing to do with that. I would hope that the teacher would have tried to have mitigated it. But if, you, if you're used to only one thing and you don't even know the other thing exists, that's gonna cause us just to live in more and more of that kind of camp tribal mentality that's really not doing us a lot of favors. So why am I talking about all of this? I think it's really important for people, first of all, to know that these different types of equipment exist because I think a lot of us don't know. Um, and second of all, I think it's really important that we go in and at least try, try the other kinds of equipment. You know, if you're a car salesman, it's not your job to know every single detail about every single kind of car on the market, or let's say you're a mechanic as well. But it's still important to understand and hopefully respect why those different things exist. So let's say you're a used car salesman and someone comes up to you and they say, okay, here's the deal. I am looking for something that's within my price range. Um, I'm looking for something that's just gonna get me from A to B and I get the job done and that's a little bit versatile and I'm not gonna feel too bad about like maybe throwing like my dirty gym stuff in the back of it as well as like my dog and like some tacos that I picked up on the way home. You might be like, Toyota Corolla, that's like gonna be the thing for you. It's cheap, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it. In general, it's, it's just reliable. Like that's the great thing about that car. It's reliable, cool, perfect. What if then someone comes up to you and they say, hey, here's the deal. Um, I have a tendency to fall asleep. You know, I have some sleep disorder. Um, I really need something that is safe for me, um, safe when I'm driving uh, my kids, um, and also looks presentable because I'm a high executive in my in my job. And you're like, okay, well, what what do we want to talk about then? Okay, we've got two very different price points. Um, so we've got either the SUV and the Tesla. Both of them have these these things, these bells that go off if you start veering off the road a little bit or if it thinks that you're, you know, you are falling asleep, this is a price point for them, like how does that look for you? And it's like, oh, also by the way, um, my doctor said that I really need to think about my environmental footprint or I really need to like build a lot of big muscles for whatever reason, that's not your not your business, Mr. Salesperson. Then you might be like, oh, okay, let's get you the Tesla, let's get you the mega former because that might be the thing that makes sense for you. And then there's someone else who comes in and they say, here's the deal. Um, I, I really love feeling connected to the road and the machine that I'm a part of. And I really love history and I, I love and I wanna respect the history of, of an automobile. And you might say, well, like, well, of course, clearly that's the thing for you. The important thing is just to know that those things exist and they have different functions and they were developed for different reasons. I wish I could say to you right now, all of the differences between all of the different kinds of reformers and Cadillacs and chairs that are out there and truly not just in terms of like, oh, it's this much bigger, but what are the differences and why? If I'm honest though, I'm still trying to figure it out. And oftentimes I feel like you ask and everyone looks at you like you're an idiot or you've got three heads or whatever it is, we're back in the Pilates lawsuit that you may or may not know what happened. Either way, it can be really, really challenging. I wish teacher training programs would do more to address that. I wish that, wish that a lot of us started our training programs just with a basic history of Pilates, basic history of who went where, all the different kinds of equipment that were developed, how they're similar, how they're different, but unfortunately that's not the case. Again, if you've seen my other videos, you know I've been through two different programs. I am not based um, on the East Coast of the United States. I'm not based on the West Coast of the United States. Um, actually, I'm not even in the United States, and I find it very, very, very challenging to get information um, about Pilates and what are we all doing. So I think for now, the important thing is that just kind of each of us take a little bit of ownership until there's more support with our community. We ask more questions, uh, we stay curious, and we're respectful of the fact that there are different things. They were created for different reasons, and all of those things are totally valid. You can love, love, love 
your Toyota Corolla and be like, you do you over there, Mr. Tesla. That's fine. Totally cool. Yeah? Simultaneously, you can love, love, love your Porsche. I think it's the best thing in the world. And every now and then be like, you know, SUV is kind of practical. Cool. Let's use it. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. And otherwise, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you guys so much for watching.